So welcome back again, and now we're about to start painting. Or more specifically, in this case, to prime. Now, um, in general, with plastic models, so long as you uh, give them a good wash to get any type of um, uh, mold release, oils that may have gotten on it from your hand, or so forth, uh, you can generally get away with uh, just painting directly onto the model piece. However, since we did use the uh, photo etch and metal parts on this build, we are definitely going to have to prime as the paint really will not adhere to these parts. Um, to that end, um, I'm going to be using uh, Alclad's gray primer as I, since I've started using this, I've basically fallen in love with the stuff as it comes pre-thinned so all you have to do is load it into your airbrush and shoot now um, as far as primers go you can really use just about any type of primer you want I know Tamiya makes one uh, Mr. Color has the Mr. Surfacer line which you can use as a primer uh, you can also just use your rattle can uh, hardware store primer which a long time ago I used to use Really, it comes down to just personal preference. Um, I like this stuff because it comes pretty thin. I can use it in my airbrush and get a fairly decent amount of control over it. And because it comes in a larger 4 ounce bottle as opposed to the Tamiya and Mr. Surfacer, which come in smaller amounts. And obviously, again, as I said, pre thin, so I just need to shake it up so it's mixed and then pour it in the airbrush. So uh, when you are painting though, you do want to um, make sure you have adequate ventilation. You know, do it outside or or open up some windows, doors, what have you. And you do want to make sure you have a decent uh, backsplash area to catch any excess paint and all that. The oh again, you do just generally want to make sure you have a decent painting area. And another thing you do want to consider picking up is a good uh, respirator or painter's mask again really depends on how much you're willing to spend and how much you are going to get into this hobby if you are going to be doing a lot of painting or are going really serious about the hobby then definitely get a spend the extra money and get a respirator so uh, let's get into it then Again. Now, one thing I almost forgot to mention is that you should also want to be wearing some kind of protection for your hand. No, I use uh, plastic gloves as they're cheap and effective. Uh, this is mainly to help with cleanup so you're not getting paint on your hands. Now, I'm going to start off using what amounts to the, your basic painting technique, which is slow, controlled uh, strokes. Uh, you want to do this if you're new to airbrushing or if you're still not really good with it yet. Uh, once you get better, you can start doing what I'm doing here, which is uh, much more controlled and um, direct use of the paint. And really, it's just keep the um, area mo that you're painting moving so you don't get a lot of paint build up and you also want to keep your airbrush moving as well to help minimize this now at this stage you you're mainly just trying to get everything covered um, in this case I'm using a double action airbrush however um, if you're using a single action for this it's just it's all the same here now one thing to note with the barrel um, I found it a little difficult to fully cover because of the rounded shape so you want to take extra care when you're painting that part to help make sure that you're covering the whole entire barrel and what's more another thing to note um, you do want to keep your airbrush somewhat close to the surface of the model but at the same time not too close as if you have it too far away you'll get um, like a powdery residue on the model where paint has dried in the air and mixed with the wet paint this will create like a sandy type texture. Now granted, you depending on what you're doing, 
this might be advantageous as it creates a interesting textural effect on the model. So, again, that's one idea. Now, as I said before, you don't want to be too close as this makes the paint um, build up too quickly and leaves you with a basically a puddle. Now, uh, right, what I'm doing right here is um, looking over for the part I'm painting. Uh, mainly just to make sure I've covered everything, uh, gotten all the various nooks and crannies, and so forth. And yeah, that's something else you want to make sure you do. And then once I do this, I give it one more quick um, over off camera. So, now have our primer um, all set up and dried. Um, you want to make sure you give out with time between coats. I, so, done that. Um, one of the other reasons I forgot to mention earlier as to why you should prime is because it allows you to find any uh, missed places where you might have uh, not done a good enough job with filler or any imperfections you might not have seen and so forth. So, uh, we've done that, and about ready to start with the first color. Now, um, another thing to note, um, depending on what you're doing exactly, what type of finish, look, what have you, you're going for, um, now would be the time that you would do a base coat, usually typically either a dark color, such as gray, or a lighter color, such as white or if you're doing a metallic, a gloss black. <clears throat> now since we're not doing that and we're going for a, basically a mid-tone color since, um, since we use the gray primer we can uh, ignore this step which is in most cases what you can get away with doing and why it's better to use a gray primer as it's good for almost all situations. Now I've got our paint loaded up. I have yet to mix it though as there's a very nice little trick to mixing and that is at least if you have a uh, gravity feed um, airbrush that is to you basically put your finger over the nozzle and gently pull back. This I'll try to get this on camera as best I can but it causes the air to backflow into the paint cup and mix the paint for you. So, have that pretty well mixed. So, let's begin. After I cap this and put my mask on. So, when painting, um, you basically want to follow a lot of the same procedures that you uh, did when you were putting the primer down. The only difference here is that you first want to obviously test the paint out, make sure you mixed it correctly, as I'm doing here. Um, and again, if it's not quite fully mixed, then just again, mix it again. But, uh, again, shows you the point.